La Video was Brazil my favorite is driving, in case rental store in San Francisco. They had French movies. Hey, guys. We're live. Hey, everyone. Hello, um, Internet. Beatmaster in the chat room is saying, I demand trial by baguette. <laughs> and I'm not sure I also is, demand but... trial by baguette. I demand a baguette. <laughs> Diamond Club, what a Diamond Club? For the That's chat, diamondclub.tv for the web chat. That's what I'm trying to find. Don't panic, because I'm sure you're going to auto-play something for a second. Diamond Club. TV. Diamond Club. <coughs> oui, c'est diamondclub.tv, bien sûr. Um, the, wow, this hat's jacked up now that I'm like looking at it big. All right. It Ready? was in the... So are we doing the, the thing where we comment on the headlines and we have yeah. to put in? Okay. Uh, but, but because we're all reading them. Um, okay. So we just could, go with the flow. We just go with the flow. All right. And Can Molly, I apologize in advance if I missed a spelling error. <laughs> you know what? I'm pretty much on vacation, so I'm pretty like relaxed about it. Oh, uh, what's... Oh, oh wait. Sorry, what? What's in J in gay anning? Uh, oh, it's the name of the okay. So yeah, do you know I would how say to read it? ing anning, but okay. I'm just guessing. I don't know yet. All right. The default. Hi everyone. Hello. Um, why is the beep the default on the chat? This hat is hysterical, dude. This hat has been like jammed in my closet. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, I'm not hearing the beep. If that. That helps, but yeah. it might drive you crazy. I've right? heard it on, yeah, I, I made it. I made it stop. I just needed like a All nanosecond right. to make it stop. All right, make it stop. Here make we go. it stop. Okay. Support for the Daily Tech News Show is provided by Patreons like you at patreon.com slash detect. This is FPN, the Frog Pants Network. <laughs> This is the Daily Tech News for Tuesday, June 17th, 2014. I'm Tom Merritt. We have some wonderful guests joining us today. First of all, Molly Wood, columnist for the New York Times. How's it going, Molly Wood? Hello, world. It's going outstanding. Patrick tricked us all into hats, and then I discovered that this poor one's been in the closet for, like, a while. You have a lovely cowboy hat on. Other than that, things are things are going super. Patrick hey, it goes Beja. With my deputy thing. What's that? It goes with my deputy title. Deputy Molly. <laughs> <laughs> Patrick Bezos, host of La Rendezvous Tech, is responsible for the hats. Uh, and, and you're wearing I'm a damn nice beret. proud of it. Yes, yeah. thank you very much. You know, um, I should put a hat on here. Me... Yes. Ooh, he had something We've been planned. waiting. Oh, oh my lord, devil. it's the beard. It's, it's not just a hat. It's also a replacement beard. <laughs> you clever devil. You know, I was given this by Tony Wang after I shaved my beard for the last Buzz Out Loud, Molly. Oh, really? Yeah. This kind Aww. of help. Because I bet your face was freezing. <laughs> help me through the transition. <laughs> <laughs> all I right. Let's... I now cannot look at the video stream at all. <laughs> you know, the, there, I can't look. usually, usually uh, it's not too much of a, of a loss if you don't watch the, the show. But I think in this case, you're probably missing something. You might want to so. check out the YouTube video. <laughs> yeah. Then again, you might not. <laughs> <laughs> let's look at some headlines. <laughs> TechCrunch reports that Facebook finally released the Slingshot app for iOS and Android. That's the app they accidentally published to the iOS App Store back on June 9th. The app lets you send photos and videos to contacts. The twist is the recipients can't see what you sent until they send something back to you. Slingshot also doesn't store the photos and videos permanently, just up to seven days. Yeah, you know, I... I, I have so many questions, and they're all why. <laughs> Basically, I, I, I read the story and my first reaction was like, this is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. And then I thought about it for, you know, a few minutes. And then I realized it's actually the dumbest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> so it, maybe if you think of it as, you know, some weird chat roulette like a chat slash images experiment of some kind and not a, ch a single, you know, singular chat client. It could be some kind of interesting to the youngsters people. No, it's no, it's like a pathetic attempt to differentiate, like to say, well, OK, so the thing that's going to be different about our thing versus Snapchat and Cyberdust and all those ones <laughs> is that you can't even like get this. This is going to blow the hat right off your head. You can't even see the message Whoa. until you answer it. <gasps> like none of that like okay for, I mean it's just it doesn't work on so many levels that I don't even really know where to start so you're predicting a flop okay I, I think I'm with you 
just one of those, just one of those like little things that everyone's going to talk about for a day or two, and then it's going to quietly vanish. That's my that's my my official prediction. Speaking of quietly vanishing, and gadget passes along that sources tell the Wall Street Journal that AT and T has signed a deal to be the exclusive carrier in the U.S. for the forthcoming Amazon phone. Amazon, of course, has scheduled an announcement for tomorrow morning and evidently does not want to sell any phones. <laughs> Mistake, if it's true. Well, I mean, is hey. this the iPhone circa 2004? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. The, the iPhone started with AT&T. It did all right. It was a different time, though. Mm -hmm. Like T-Mobile's sitting there. Like, we will sell as many of these for you as possible with our uncarrier plan. And Amazon's like, mm, no, we'd rather limit well, sales. Someone right. on Twitter had an excellent point about it, actually, which is that this makes it seem like they're hiding. Like it actually at this point in the game, because nobody does a carrier exclusive anymore, oh. it almost gives the impression that they are not that confident it's in the phone and that they need like a testing ground. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Maybe they maybe it's a a version one that they really want to get out and uh it's not gonna be as awesome as version two that's gonna come out later. <laughs> You're so hopeful. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I try. You be the um, optimist, I'll be the like Debbie Downer. <laughs> let, let's do that. Um, Recode reports reports Apple agreed to settle a class action suit regarding ebook pricing. Plaintiffs had sought in eight million and four, no eight hundred and forty million dollars in damages, but the details of the settlement were not made public. Apple is still appealing the court's ruling from last year that it violated federal and state antitrust rules. Payment of the settlement is contingent on the outcome of that appeal. Boring, yeah. right? Yeah, <laughs> Apple is just like, we, we don't like to lose, but right. in case we do... But we kind of know we're going to... Let's lock this down. We'd rather not, but we yeah. probably won't. <laughs> the Verge passes along that the Financial Times reported today that YouTube would begin blocking music videos from certain indie labels if they did not agree to new licensing terms that include provisions for a new music service YouTube is preparing to launch. Robert Kinkle, Google's vice president and global head of business at YouTube, told the Financial Times blocking would happen in, quote, a matter of days. Kinkle says record labels representing 95% of the music industry have agreed to terms. The remaining labels, represented by the rights agency Merlin, are reportedly holding out for a better deal. The Independent Music Companies Association, Impala, is asking the European Commission for emergency assistance regarding the matter. And we We're will talk a lot this more yeah. further <laughs> in so much depth. Uh -huh. In the meantime, TechCrunch reports that the Nest Protect Smoke and Carbon Monoxide Detector is now back on sale in the U.S. after two months off the market. The device was removed from sale April 3rd due to safety concerns. A function that allowed users to wave to silence the alarm could have prevented real alarms from sounding. The wave feature is now disabled and the Nest is on sale at a discount. Yeah, I think it's like 30 bucks off, something like yep. that. Please buy it, please. please buy don't be, mad. Don't be mad about how we could have killed you. <laughs> Time for some news from you. Nobody burned. Uh, these are stories submitted at our subreddit, dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com, by folks who are like, I think I would like this covered. And then other folks go in and vote them up, and it helps us put together the lineup. Andrew Terry posted the Privacy International article, for instance, that the UK's GCHQ spy agency made public the fact that it monitors social network users in the UK on services like Facebook, Twitter, and Google. Policy was made public after a legal challenge by several civil liberties organizations. GCHQ justifies the surveillance based on the fact that they say such communications are considered external communications. And think about Twitter posts being public. Okay, far, fair as far as it goes. The privacy organizations, though, worry that even things like text messages, private accounts, and email sent through such services could be intercepted under that justification. <laughs> Almost certainly are. Um, wait, wait, under the justification that That service is an external service. Therefore, we can take all of the data from that service with our little <laughs> right. spy Right, so by, by external communication, they don't mean that it's at, outwards uh, for, you know, it's intended to people that are not in your private No, they uh, mean it's on circle. the internet. Mean, right, yeah. it's outside of your device. Wow. Right, okay. Yeah. I mean, well we're, we're assuming because we're jaded by everything that has happened ever, um, they could mean government. That. You're right, you're right. <laughs> but presumably they are referring to messages posted publicly on those websites, but of course we have all too much reason to worry that they mean everything. 
Uh, Melchizedek74 pointed out the Android Central story about an Indiegogo campaign for an Android 4.4 powered wireless router called SOAP. The router works with an Android app to allow easier administration of that router and the devices connected to it, which I think we can all agree would be awesome. It can also replace hubs needed for home automation devices, and multiple SOAP routers can form a mesh network. So the early bird... I'm loving this. I know, right? Why is networking so hard? Fix it, SOAP. The early bird price is $129 for the entry-level model on up to $229 for the top end. I'm all over that. As soon as they said mesh network, I was in. I'm all over that. Plus home automation hub, plus... Easier administration of the router. I mean, seriously, why is networking? So I just went through, I just automated my smart home. And let me tell you, there was so much swearing and so much firmware involved. <laughs> it was ludicrous. It should have been a documentary. Swearing and firmware. The Molly Swearing Wood and store. firmware. <laughs> <laughs> Inge or Inge Anning submitted the Verge story that U.S. Senators Patrick Leahy and Doris Matsui that must be a Japanese name, uh, are proposing a bill that would require the FCC to use its authority to prevent paid prioritization of the Internet content by ISPs. The online competition and consumer choice... Oh my God, I'm sorry. The Online Competition and Consumer Choice Act would not solve the FCC's problem over how to justify its authority to enforce such requirements. Let's force you to do something that no I one's sure you have the authority to do. <laughs> that well, didn't the uh, dem uh, the the Republicans propose a law that would do that would prevent them from yes. doing that? So, yeah, yeah. But that is like how sad the situation is with the FCC at this point. That they are so like cronified, which I think is a word that means that they're total cronies. Um, that they may actually have to be forced by law to use their authority to enforce the law. They're both cron cronies and fattened by cronuts. And fattened by cronuts, aren't we all? Um, you guys, you can't even believe the stop that Mexico made just now to keep Brazil from scoring. It's like the 85th <laughs> minute, and I, I think that they're going to play them to a draw, on. and it is amazing! <laughs> Uh, finally, Metal Freak submitted the Verge article that DARPA is developing anonymity tools to supplement and replace Tor as part of the Safer Warfighter Communications Program. One project in particular called Service-Oriented Net-Coded Architecture for Tactical Anonymity, Sonata, is described <laughs> as a next-generation Tor. Sonata traffic is mixed at each relay in the network by randomly multiplying traditional packets by a constant and then adding them together while also switching up secondary markers that would identify the traffic. So finding the nodes becomes a lot harder. DARPA is also investing in a decoy routing system called Curveball, which was developed by Raytheon. And that is a look at the headlines. Hey, uh, because Molly's on the show, we're just going to mention real quickly that Molly and I do another show where you might hear about cronuts or all kinds of other things. It's called It's a Thing, mm -hmm. where we just talk about things that are becoming things these days. Things that are things, like this hat is a thing. Hey, you know what? Here's a bonus thing for those of you who are listening that I've just noticed recently and I don't want to forget. Stoked. Stoked is back in a big way. Really? Everybody all of a sudden, yeah, like I feel like everyone in my little circle is has all of a sudden started saying stoked. And I think we were saying it a little self-consciously at first because it was kind of a funny thing to say. But now all of a sudden everybody's saying it for real. So stoked is a thing again. Will psyched follow on its heels? I think, I think that another thing is hats that are soon going to become a thing. Yeah, because, totally. you know, they're totally hats. Uh, you can check out these kinds of things and more at itsathing.me. So so do you record a bunch of them at a time? Because it always seems like you're... Did I just blow a secret there? No, that's our no, new thing. We Actually, announced it. That's our new thing. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, so our new thing binge. is to, re to binge. Exactly. Okay. That's good. So yeah, so I think there was... So we posted sort of a little chunk a couple of weeks ago. So there are like new, new episodes. Yeah. Ooh. So when we record, we record usually around four. And then we'll just put all four out in subsequent days. Mm -hmm. so that you don't have to sit there artificially uh, waiting. Mm -hmm. But if my podcast thing, that's why, I did, well, anyway, I didn't see it because my podcast app just downloads the latest one, so I thought it was just one. But and we I put it by space by days just for all. that purpose, and it still didn't catch all four? 
No, it probably did, but it replaced the older oh. one with the newest one because I only keep, I have so many I podcasts it like I listen to. daily that you don't keep yeah. up with, like daily yeah, tech news Yeah, exactly. Show. I have too many. So, <laughs> see, the thing is that uh, people should know that you might have missed uh, episodes of uh, It's a Thing. Like me. It's true. Right. Go back Thank and Four episodes were recently yeah. released. Don't miss. Don't miss them. Don't miss them. <laughs> Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so we, we we got the facts out in the headlines about the U YouTube's going to launch a music service. They're not denying that. They're confirming that part of it. Uh, and Kinkle says that they've got 95% of the labels on board. It's this 5% that's left. You may see 90% out there. Financial Times originally reported 90%. They changed it around 11.30 a.m. Pacific to 95. Mm -hmm. Not sure what happened there. Uh, but most of the labels are on board, but there's this one agency Merlin, that is a rights management agency, and the labels that it represents are not on board. Now, Blocked was used in the financial term time story in relation to Kinkle's quote. They didn't quote him saying it. The Verge also used Blocked, which is a very interesting choice of words. If YouTube is blocking content, they're saying somebody upload it and we block it from being seen by people. Mm -hmm. GigaOM claims that the block would not apply to user-generated content. So if I just record myself playing a ukulele and put it up, obviously that wouldn't apply. So that, that was the first thing I'm like, so they're just going to block all content that doesn't have a license? That doesn't make sense. The other thing is YouTube could risk losing safe harbor if they unilaterally edited one, edited one uploader's content without cause. So Molly, how does YouTube justify blocking videos from selected labels? Do we know that that's the case that they could lose Safe Harbor because wouldn't they couldn't they claim a commercial there's a there's a sort of a clear commercial reason for blocking content based on Okay, so that could be their out is to say we let anybody upload user generated videos but but there's a commercial reason with this particular upload. Right. Like no, these I, videos I are being put here as commercial promotion. I mean, I don't get me wrong. I, I just I just want to clarify that I, I'm not I have not seen a legal argument that they could lose Safe Harbor over this. I do think that I, do, I, I, I don't know how you justify this, right? Because what so you're I, essentially saying is sign on to make us money at terms that we dictate or we will disappear you from our service, which to me seems a little monopolistic. Well, more than a little, but yeah. can't, uh, is it, isn't it just, so it, they're adding a new service, which is kind of making this a, a, a lot more complicated than it would be in other, uh, uh, you know, in another story, but isn't it just, couldn't it just be explained by the fact that they're actually just changing the terms of service and they're asking everyone to sign on to the new terms of service, which, you know, the but fact they're that not the, asking the new terms everyone, are, Patrick. Well, the terms of service right. could be if you are a commercial, a commercial uh, uh, music or songwriter or performer, uh, then your music needs to be available in these and this and this and this, uh, you know, format slash service and everything. And if you don't, you know, that's just a part of the terms of service. If you're just putting up a video where, you know, idiots with hats talk about tech, then that's fine. <laughs> Um, but uh, you know that's the kind. I, that's the way that. I understand I mean, that, it. I don't yeah, know if it's does, accurate. That does seem to be the way that they are positioning it as, it, it as a terms of service change and a requirement that you that you do that you do licensing. So if I'm the label, why can't I just start my own user generated channel like like any of us can and just mm -hmm. upload my videos that way? Well, and that's where it would turn into a disaster, right? Because let's say people start doing that, which they would be 100% justified in doing. And then YouTube comes along and does start to try to block those videos. Then it is a complete disaster for YouTube in terms of public relations, in terms of the the slippery slope that could start to lead to you know musicians who maybe ostensibly are independent musicians but who have over a certain number of views, or or people who uh, companies that upload commercials or other forms of advertising. I mean, if if Google is going to force people to sign on to a commercial enterprise, their own separate commercial enterprise at risk of being blocked from a service like it's a pretty that's, that's a bad precedent and what's amazing to me is that they seem to have at least anonymously and on the record confirmed that they're essentially strong arming people into not people artists and labels into signing on to what is a streaming music service that yeah, so on the idea of streaming music services, right? The one thing that has managed to differentiate them is, or that they want to differentiate them is catalog, catalog size. So far they're all about the same. 
So it seems to be that YouTube is trying to launch a streaming music service that would have a bigger catalog, but the only way they're, they're getting there is by basically being just mafia. Hmm. So also, in other words, they learned how to be, guys, and I'm stealing this from our producer, Jenny, they learned how to be like the music industry. <laughs> yes. Yeah. They're the music industry that nobody saw coming. And I, you know, I was on a panel just a couple months ago at CES in January um, with Dave Allen and Hank Shockley, who was previously a public enemy. And they were saying flat out that they don't understand why artists get so fired up about Spotify when the one you should really be afraid of is YouTube because Far and away, the most streams of songs come from YouTube. Far and away, more than any other service combined. By the way, Mexico just played Brazil to a draw. <laughs> spoiler, to in a case draw. you were recording. Yeah, sorry, spoiler for the live people, but oh my god. Uh, I'm turning it off now, though, and I'm focusing. It's, it's a little bit... so the. the the whole thing is very surprising, and it might very well be, I, I guess you've ex uh, expressed that uh, a couple of times, but it might very well be that we're not understanding the, the whole story there. This is just still developing, kind of. But th there are two elements that I think are very surprising. First of all, that G Google would do that at all, which it's it's horrendous. It's, it's seriously some of the worst image damaging thing that they could do that they have ever done i think I, I can't really think of anything else maybe the 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 android q thing that was a disaster but that was just ridiculous this is actually offensive um and the other thing is they already have 90 to 90 percent of the catalog if their service is really valuable why not give people the option to make more money uh, by you know also being uh, enrolled in that service instead of forcing them, I don't really understand how they have to why they have to force them to go into it. Mm -hmm. um, it it must be that the terms are so bad that exactly. they're going to be making less money than the avenue that they're getting from the other. And that's um, what the artists are hinting. Videos. Like no one has said that. No one has said what the terms are. They say that it's protected by NDA, but I think it was Billy Bragg who told The Guardian that the terms are terrible. Here's what I think is going on. And I need to disclose that my wife works for YouTube with creators, oftentimes the music industry. So you don't have to believe anything I say that's my opinion about this. Mm -hmm. But uh, The Verge reported that YouTube does not want to launch a paid service and then be forced to show some videos in ad-supported mode. So let's say they do their paid their service. And they're like, these videos are ad-supported mode. Oh, wait a minute. We have these 5% of the labels that didn't join our service. So, oh, when you watch that music, that does have ads, even though you're paying to get rid of ads. They don't want that. So what I'm guessing, entirely a guess, is that Google decided, because in its googly engineery way, it makes sense, all the music labels that are labels that they have partnerships with for advertising have to sign on to the new terms. 95% of the labels said, great, they seem about the same or better than we used to get. And Merlin said, no, you have a new service. We want new terms and we want better terms. And YouTube said, no, you're taking these terms or you're leaving them because they're arrogant and they think that the labels need them more than they need the labels. And so now the labels are like, well, then we're not going to sign a license. And here's my guess about the blocking is that YouTube said, hey, you know what? We have a lot of experience dealing with copyright. If you don't give us a license, we're forced to not be able to allow those videos right. up in your channel because that would violate copyright. <laughs> and so therefore, since you won't sign a license, we won't be able to allow your videos to play. And it's your fault. And the labels are like, no, it's not our fault. We'll sign a license. You're just not negotiating fairly, which is why they went to the European Commission to say, these guys are pushing us around to accept terms that we don't think are fair. Yeah, I mean, I can see them using the copyright argument a little bit, except that if the license owner uploads the video and can prove that they're the owner of the copyright, Google can't say that they, you know, they don't have to, I, I think that if you are the content owner, yes. i.e. the label, and you upload that video, you don't have to have a, because that would that would presume that every digital ad agency ha has a licensing agreement with Google whenever they upload a, when, a commercial. When, but when you upload your video, you check a box that says, I'm giving YouTube the ability to play this, right? Right. And so 
when you're a partner like this, you have much bigger licenses, and Google's saying, this is going to be the license you're going to sign. Right. I also think the other side of this is Google's like, you can go ahead and put your videos on there without ads. That's fine. And they'll, you know, and that's calling their bluff a little bit. Again, I don't know that that's what they're saying, but that could be the thing. Like, hey, you want to put them up without without advertisements? You know, knock yourselves out. You'll I mean, get I nothing. Think I do think it's, I think there's a long, rich history of the tech industry using bullying tactics in, in service of what they say is a great user experience. But there is no way that Google didn't know that this was going to go down pretty badly. That if you were starting to tell anybody, you have to sign on to these new agreements. And if you don't, we're going to, I mean, at the point at which a conversation, well, Molly, any 95 conversation. 95 percent of the people were just fine. What's wrong with you guys? Yeah, also, only YouTube said that 95% of the people are just fine. So, like, I think we can take that number all on its own with a pretty... But I was at the car dealership, and they said that 95% of the people sign at that price. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, I'm not buying any of that, right? Like, I'm not buying the number of people who signed on. And assuming that they signed on, if they signed on with their arms twisted behind their backs, like, those are the kind of confessions that usually don't count. Yeah, and, and, and in this case, it wouldn't matter how they got their arms twisted. Google's not going to tell that to Merlin. They're going and to if just they, it, say, we got most of everybody else. What's your problem? If something even close to this is the case, if Google is really, truly strong-arming strong people and labels and companies into signing on to their own commercial service at risk of not being seen, of being disappeared from YouTube, that is the kind of slippery slope that just is so problematic for a site like that. Because what is what happens to... What happens to anybody who rises above a certain threshold of revenue? What happens to any independent creator, whether it's a podcaster or a musician or uh, like the people who make the oranges talk? I mean, it's just <laughs> not. It's not okay. It's it's certainly the the kind of uh, I remember a couple of uh, maybe a f couple of weeks ago, four weeks ago, there was uh, a, a sort of concurrence of events where different giants were misbehaving. Uh, mm -hmm. There was Amazon and Google, and and someone wrote an, an article about that topic, saying they kept telling us that they would not abuse their great power uh, to do you know bad things, and we sort of believed them because they were. Uh, uh, actually making things better for us. You know, Amazon is awesome, Google is fantastic, all of this. And certainly in, in those instances, there were a lot more complicated stories. The Amazon Ashet thing is, is very complicated and it's not just Amazon being bad. But uh, if Google is indeed imposing these sorts of terms to uh, uh, the music industry, and it it's, does paint a chilling picture to what it can do in general. And, and it's sort of one of those moments where you, you're taken aback a little bit and, and maybe wake up a little bit as well. And you're like, wait a second. is it, Google could really mess things up there for, yeah. you know, YouTube, obviously, but a lot of things. So I really hope that they're going to fix it and that the PR issues alone will be enough to... Uh, uh, to, to clarify this at least and to give their side of the story and maybe even change things a little bit and do some damage control. But it is very worrisome uh, if it's confirmed. So, At best, in my opinion, this yeah, is arrogance. At best, arrogance. it's worrisome. At oh, best, yeah. this is arrogance. Uh, yeah. That the, the YouTube thinks they're being fair. Uh, at worst, this is them saying, you know, we don't really care. We, we want you, we, we're going to make you do it our way. Um, it's it. We could talk a lot about. I, I actually don't. I think the Financial Times story paints a picture that's probably a little worse as far as the blocking. I'd be curious though. I could be wrong. They may be like, no, we're gonna actually gonna block those videos. I mean, here's uh, the thing. They haven't. What you mean it. by blocking is that that could be really bad. And they but, haven't denied it. I mean, it has now been several hours that this story has been out, I, and they and have there not was a correction in the it. Financial Times article about the percentage. Where did that come from? Could be a reporter's notes. Could be a call. But yeah. Yeah. They obviously, it's, Financial Times got in and altered the story once. So if they had received yeah. some kind of comment, they would have put it in there. I'm thinking we're really... there's a lot of people at Google now, you know, scrambling around trying to make sure that, first of all, they get a, a, the right message out because it's very important that the first thing they say, uh, you know, has a positive effect. And it's very possible that they're just trying to find out what's happening. 
you know it might be that some some of the uh, yeah. uh, teams at YouTube which is a little bit separate from Google itself is doing things that the you know the uh, PR people and and general counsel at Google might not be aware of and and before they YouTube puts out a statement on their own there everyone you know there was a couple of calls going like all right everyone stop let's just figure out what the hell is happening what is factual what we can say and then we'll we'll say something so by the end of the day tomorrow morning it's it's likely we'll hear something but um, i mean to patrick's point about companies behaving badly i do think think that this is an important sort of pivot point for the tech industry who who weirdly i think over the past few years have started to think of these companies in it's like we we all tend to think of companies in terms of good and evil but there has been sort of a pass given to these tech companies because you know google has wonderful intentions and netflix is the underdog and amazon it makes our lives easier and we forget that like look when it comes to matters of trust a publicly traded company with a fiduciary responsibility for con for consistent growth cannot be trusted period and that sets aside everything that i've ever heard about dealing with youtube which is that they are almost unbelievably arrogant and even worse is that they probably think that they're still behaving the way that people were treating them right like but we're great we only do good things so we just want our service to be awesome yeah Why I, would I, I think there's there's one thing that in our eyes makes makes this thing even worse it's the fact that they're actually you know banging on the heads of the little guys uh the, the youtube is the place that the independent people the people that don't have a huge distribution network that don't, don't have access to you know uh, um, uh, broadcasting mediums manage to get a voice so obviously now the things are a little bit different but still you can get your message out through youtube and be on the same level as you as, as other broadcasters are and they're sort of going against the reasons that we liked them in the first place. Well, that we liked them. They're no, going against so? the middle guys, not the little guys. And that's why I thought that a gigaton assertion well, that yeah. independent creators, like truly independent creators, are, wouldn't be affected by this. Only small labels would be offended by it. But I think you have to, I really, I mean, to me, that's a for now. If, if this is the policy <laughs> and if this continues, then YouTube is in a very unique position, a position that no other sort of publisher of content has ever been in, which is that it has a massive stable of content providers, and it could at any point set a threshold after which it determines that if you know if you have a certain amount of traffic, therefore you make a certain amount of money, that makes you a commercial contributor to this site. And so that the the distinction about user generated starts to get a lot fuzzier. I mean I just you know well, they you know have I love those it. distinctions. It's right. just what they're going to do about them that I exactly. think you need to be worried about. And right. so, yeah, does it say like, look, you've made X amount of money, you've had, you have X amount of views on our site. We can, we now consider you a commercial contributor. Here are your licensing terms. No, but they are. That's what I'm saying is they already say like, you've got 10,000 subscribers. Well, now you can qualify to be a partner and mm -hmm. join us and do these things. And I think that's what got these labels in trouble. And, and so it's right to your point. Yeah. Which is the labels were given special relationships. <laughs> to my point, like I was making up a fictional, horrible, slippery slope story, and you're like, "Oh no, no, they have that." Yeah, <laughs> yeah they have that. <laughs> and that's what these labels are are getting are getting subject to. Is my again, this is my guess, is that they're like, "Oh, you want to continue to have this special partnership agreement?" Well, guess what? <laughs> Pray we and, don't and alter by it the way, further. By the way, the biggest YouTubers are independent content creators who do stuff in their you know in their uh, room. You know, PewDiePie, who has 27 million subscribers now, um, is a guy who plays video games. And and he, of course, now he's making a lot of money. I'm sure he has a lot of people. But it, it's it's still, I still believe that th that distinction doesn't really exist. Uh, you know, the independent guy and then the independent guy that it's just the amount of money that they made that could be a distinction factor. I agree. And so it's well, the top subscriber now. channels are mostly music with your occasional PewDiePies. Mm. Right. Are you sure? But I think pretty yep. soon, I mean, I'm just saying, look out, cutie pie. Like, yeah. it's, there's no reason that this will not start to, that this is not the kind of thing that would feather out to affect a lot of contributors and a lot of people who have put, you know, and look, I mean, 
the, it, again, it comes down to an odd misplaced trust. Like there's no, <laughs> when there's no downside for you, right? When you can just create whatever you want and put it on YouTube and, and hot damn, you might all of a sudden start making several hundred thousand dollars a year. There's no reason to think that that too good to be do, true scenario <laughs> will continue forever because Google is in the business of making money off of advertising, period. Like they're gonna, they are going to maximize their efforts to do that. Yeah, they uh, just uh, I, I could only find the February stats real quickly, but PewDiePie, then the YouTube account itself, then Vainos Gaming, then Katy Perry, uh, oh. then Ola Soy German, then Shakira, then Sky Does Minecraft, then Smosh, then One Direction, then Eminem. So it's actually more like 50-50. I, 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 I was exaggerating it, apparently. But yeah, it's, it's essentially either gaming guys <laughs> or famous musicians. I mean, That's it's interesting. kind of insane, isn't it? So you know who's they're coming for next, gaming <laughs> yep. guys. Well, what the chat room was all talking about Twitch. Did Google buy Twitch? No, that yep. they, or was there that was just a rumor? Rumored to, right. but they never actually bought them. I mean, we know of. wait, then wait. like disaster. Wait, wait, they didn't. I was fairly I don't know. sure I, they did. I thought that they maybe did, and that that just came out. Yeah. Let's mm. see. I'm, I'm fairly bought. sure they did, but uh, maybe I'm mistaken. I don't know. No, I'm looking. Now, see, when, when we were, when I was uh, sort of sounding kind of uh, professional, the the hat was okay. But now that I'm not sure about the facts, I'm not sure I want to keep it on. Right. Yeah, it sounds like it's still it in reportedly in talks. Yep. Okay. Because Beats was the other one at the same time that I remember was not confirmed, and that's the only one that ever got confirmed out of that. I'll tell you what, though, if that's what happens next, if that's the next news that comes out, like, look out all those dude, all those gaming guys in the top five. I mean, really, this is like a fund of, this is the start of a fundamental change in Google's business model, <laughs> and very likely, it's, if, if true, right, then it is a fundamental change in Google's business model and relationship to its content providers. All right. Let's look and the artist always the gets screwed. Future. Sorry. A little bit. Uh, on the calendar tomorrow is Woe Day, June 18th. Uh, Amazon is holding a product announcement. Whoa. Might, might be a phone. Yeah, it's probably going to be a phone. Or maybe a nice set of Hachette Filipacci steak knives. Either way, we'll find out tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow is the start of the Connected Conference in Paris, France. A two-day look at l'Internet des Objets as well as the start of a GigaOM structure conference in San Francisco, which is not an appreciation of the 90s era men's clothing store, but rather a two-day conference about building the computing infrastructure necessary to support cloud-based applications. If you're wondering what happened to that other structure, Jenny looked it up. Sears bought it a few years oh. back. Can we just go back and have Patrick read that one? Just kidding. <laughs> you mean pr properly Your French read was it? super. <laughs> <laughs> My French sucks. And finally, on this day in 1946, the first mobile telephone call was made from a car in St. Louis, Missouri. A team including Alton Dixon and Dean Mitchell from Bell Labs and future AT&T CEO H.I. Romnus worked more than a decade to make the technology for the call possible. That is deserving of a woe. Do we have a picture of the phone? I don't think so, no. Hmm, I couldn't find one anyway. Okay. Our pick of the day comes from Sam. Sometimes beautiful New Jersey is where Sam resides. He says, when Google Reader left the cloud for the great RSS reader in the sky, I tried many of the replacement options but only felt comfortable with Inno Reader. It uses the same API, so many of the third-party tools work out of the box. The developers are active and responsive to bug reports and community suggestions. In addition, they introduced some new and interesting features like rules, similar to email filters, and PDF generation from articles for printing or archival. Uh, I N O R E A D E R dot com. Uh, so if you're looking for an alternative, just in case Feedly gets DDoSed again, there's another one to check out. Uh, and um, Patrick, you you had a pick as well in the same genre. Uh, yeah, well, not exactly, but oh, it's does, not. But, okay. Yeah, no, but I, I have a couple of picks. Uh, and before I actually uh, tell my picks, I have to put on this hat, the the other hat, which mm -hmm. is uh, so last week. Uh, we went to a wedding in Rome, um, and my hat. wife was wearing this wonderful uh, wedding hat, right? And so I, I, I told her that I was going to be on uh, the, the on the show with, you know, uh, Molly Wood, editor at uh, the New York Times, and I promised her that her hat was going to be on the show with Molly Wood. So there you go. I love that hat. Um, all right. So my picks are actually pretty cool and pretty geeky. Um, it's hwcompare.com, which allows you to compare two 
um, uh, graphics cards. Uh, it's mostly the techs, uh, the the technical specs, but it's pretty handy in case you want to. You know, there are so many of them that you can't really know exactly how one compares to another, and it just draws, uh, creates algorithmically. Uh, did you change hats as well? Oh my God, you have a wedding hat as well. <laughs> I did. Fantastic. I was still. I had brought out two yeah, hats, and then okay. I was trying to be cool about it. I was just going to interject uh, later, but. <laughs> I had to bust out my wedding hat. <laughs> that is really cool. All right. Um, and so it draws like little uh, graphics and little comparisons. It's very, very handy. Uh, that's hwcompare.com. And the other one is CPU Boss. And it's, you know, it's got an awesome name, CPU Boss, and it does the same thing for CPUs. Uh, algorithmic, so it's not uh, actual comparisons by a human person that speaks and, and writes, but it's still very helpful. So there you go. My picks. Nice. Nicely done. CPUboss.com, HWcompare.com. And our picks are available as links at dailytechnewsshow.com. Our message of the day comes from Ray in Atlanta, writing in with the other side of the self-driving truck argument. We've had a long-going discussion about self-driving trucks, and there was uh, an article yesterday about the Netherlands wanting to have self-driving trucks on the roads in five years. Uh, Ray says, self-driving trucks cannot come fast enough. There's a huge deficit of trucks currently in the U.S. I have to fight harder every day to get deliveries. On the East Coast, there are seven loads for every truck every day. Nationally, capacity is down over 200% from last year. Driver hours have been cut for safety. It's harder for them to make a living. We need autonomous vehicles to get our system equilibrium back to even. And that's all Amazon's fault. Because they're well, using Amazon's all the trucks. Making it worse. Yeah. 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 Certainly but not helping. Is, it, is there a reason why you don't have a better uh, uh, train network? Oh, that's a whole other show. But yes, okay. essentially <laughs> the Decades auto of industry. corruption and... Yeah. <laughs> all right. And also, we're a very, I mean, it's a, big, it's a very big country. So there's yeah, that. Fair enough. But no, mainly just um, decades of corruption. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. So that, that's the TLDR version. Like why we don't have bike lanes. Well, that is it for this episode of Daily Tech News Show, and a fantastic one it was. Thank you, Patrick Beja, for joining us. I am so happy that I was able to make a fool of myself. And uh, thanks to YouTube, this will probably stay in the history forever. So, Well, or at least much. until I decide not to sign the licensing agreement when they make <laughs> the new tech tier. Um, Fair enough. But mostly... And if you and if you want to uh, have more of my shenanigans, uh, I host a French tech news show called Le Rendez-vous Tech, which you can subscribe and listen to at frenchspin.com. And you can also follow me at NotPatrick on Twitter. Mollywood, NewYorkTimes.com slash machine learning. That's NYTimes.com. Uh, thank you, as always. It's fantastic having you along. I'm so happy to be here, and I'm so happy to be on with Patrick because I don't know anybody who can so charmingly podcast in both English and French <laughs> and look hella good in a wedding hat. Like, what a great day, you guys. Yeah, it's a triple threat <laughs> for me, Patrick. He is a triple threat. Not even fair. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. All right. Anything else, Molly, to let folks know about before we head out? No, except that um, there will be, I will have a machine learning column this week, but there will be none next week because I will be on vacation. So just like, don't tweet me. Just I'm traveling. If, if you're uh, in a foreign country and you see Molly Wood looking person with a hat, might be Molly Wood. It's me. Yeah. I'm, I think I'm taking this one. <laughs> don't forget, to, folks, uh, we want to thank our patrons. We have 4,123 people out there, which blows me away, who have decided to help keep the show going. We appreciate every single one of you. bit.ly slash helpdtns if you want to know more about patreon.com and how patreon.com keeps the show going. It's the value for value model. Thank you, Adam Curry, for phrasing that so well. It works very well. If you find value in the show, you want to give a little value back, bit.ly slash help DTNS. Don't forget, you can have a voice uh, and, in what... And so, sorry, I really have to say this. Fabrice is saying that about Patreon, uh, he's saying, Fabrice Roux on Twitter, is there a Patreon I can chip in to make sure that Molly Wood and not Patrick won't ever wear those hats on DTNS ever again? <gasps> I would chip in. So maybe we can make that the next goal for DTNS. Come on, that is fantastic. 
<laughs> Don't forget, you can Whatever. have a voice in what stories we cover at our subreddit, dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com. You can email us feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. Give us a call, 512-59-DAILY. That's 512-593-2459. Listen to the show live, 4.30 p.m. Eastern, 1.30 p.m. Pacific at mobile.alphageekradio.com and visit our website at dailytechnewsshow.com. We will be back tomorrow when Renee Ritchie will be our guest. See you then. Boom. Hello. Hello. Hey. I know the chat room's like, boo to that guy. Yeah. <laughs> boo to that. We had such. Uh, tr- By the way, do you like my adorable? I, did. Yes. <laughs> I saw you like scamper it's off adorable. and go get your hat. I, know. <laughs> I was like, ooh, we're doing fancy hats. This one's like, I don't have any fancy hats bit. downstairs. It kind of sucked. <laughs> oh. See, um, I told you. The sneezes. Hats. I know it's smart. You gotta like always have a backup hat. I always have. I have so many hats. It's it's so um, awesome that you actually had a couple of hats with you, and even Jenny had that hats. Hat, I was like, yes. <laughs> well, I wasn't really sure um, how jacked up the cowboy hat really was gonna look. So, uh, I have um, so many great titles floating around the chat room. Uh, we had let's see, we had idiots daily, and hats. daily tech news hats. <laughs> Uh, a beard, a beret, and a chapeau walk into a bar, which is a little long. <laughs> a long uh, I like the, the spirit of it, yeah. I do like the spirit. There was a wonderful one a little further up that was, oh gosh, everybody, can you please resend your titles? Oh, I liked either this deal's getting worse all the time or pray we don't alter it further. <laughs> I like that too. Although that it's a, such a like sentence fragment. Will it make sense? I know. Hey, we don't well, to... no, but none of our titles really make sense. I'm mm-hmm. almost certain we used it before. <laughs> yeah. I Us liked too. all the, ma- I mean, we didn't say them, but I liked all the mafia stuff about, like, shame, was, shame if something wasn't <laughs> yeah, happening to your podcast. Good. You know, that's all. That's all. Yeah. Got a nice little music video here. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I almost tried to do the uh, mafia thing accent, but in French, and I figured it was going to be <laughs> a disaster. So. <laughs> French mafia? Come on. Yeah. French I don't know. mafia. Ooh, yeah, but the French mafia is uh, really interesting. The most or are they all just from Corsica? Uh, mostly, but the, you know they drink wine. We don't and talk about distinguished. We don't talk about the French mafia. <laughs> uh, there's hats off to you at some point. Mm. Mm. I don't know. YouTube alter- alters the deal. That could it's work, change. maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Swearing and firmware. <laughs> I like that one actually. <laughs> <laughs> Although this one was so much about YouTube. I feel like YouTube really needs to be in there. Yeah, yeah it does. It does. Yeah. Um, something sort of straightforward about YouTube going mafia. Or something. Yeah. I, don't know. I love all the references to Team Fortress 2 and hats in the chat room. <laughs> we have some pretty geeky people there. Um, let's see. What? You were supposed to be the chosen one. Yeah, really. <laughs> Anakin YouTuber. YouTube's supposed to be the chosen one. Ooh. Um, what is it? What is the essence of this? Hat on this to YouTube. Racket. <laughs> Wait, what was it? Is that <laughs> hats one? off to you. It's like hats on oh. to you. Hats um, on. Hats on hats to on you, YouTube. You, that's my, like, oh. my angry new insult. Yeah. Hats on to you. The wrinkle, well, ha- wrinkle. The what? I like that one. Crinkle, wrinkle. The kinkle, wrinkle. <laughs> <laughs> Although, us tube, actually, Toby Pinder. Super annoying, but it's about us tube. Kinsel. Oh, that is awesome. Yeah. It's not YouTube. It's us tube. Our tube. <laughs> it's our yeah. tube. It ain't YouTube. It's our tube. Oh. I kind of like that. Our tube. Yeah, it's kind of cool. I kind of cool. like that one. It's not YouTube, it's us tube or our tube. Yeah. Oh, that there's an offer but, YouTube can't refuse. 
But YouTube's making the offer. You can't. Yeah. 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 YouTube makes an offer you can't refuse. An offer you use. Yeah. Yeah, that's getting a little bit complicated. Oh, Google plays musical chairs. Mm. 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 Something with the yeah with the music could work. Yeah. Like. Something about music something about getting... stopping the music. Please, oh, I stop feel like music. we're heading. No, we're... we can stop the music. Oh, yes, <laughs> YouTube can stop the music. Yeah, and then there's also. I feel like we're heading towards a uh, Footloose reference here. No dancing allowed in our YouTube, right? <laughs> I, I don't know. Maybe that's just my '80s movie brain. <laughs> I don't know. I grew up in a town that didn't allow dancing, so I have. Yeah. You know, <laughs> No dancing, no music. YouTube. Oh, Eula Tube. Very Eula good, Tube. Very good, well, Toby Fender. Um, I like the YouTube Ghost Bull Mafia. Yeah. Um, idea, too, just that we don't know for sure. It's Paul my Gannon tube, is, and I'll is, cry if I want to. <laughs> Paul Gannon is con congratulating us on uh, going a whole episode of DTNS without saying Xbox off. Oh, uh, too late. Uh, <laughs> uh, wah, wah. Um, YouTube music, hats. Um... I like something like, no, it's our tube. Yeah. I like, that yeah. Too. I I like was... it's not YouTube, it's our tube. I like that. Yeah, but that's, yeah. you know, yeah, it's, it, it, I really like the thing, but it sort of makes it, we are entitled to YouTube. Like, you can't do what you want with the service, which I, it's not because it's our service that you can't do this. It's because it's it's borderline illegal, right? Hmm. Oh, no, I think we're saying, yes. I think that title is coming from the point of view of Google, like Google saying Oh, to us, right, okay. Oh, right, it is right. not YouTube. It is our tube, like asserting oh, their ownership. Oh, then, yes, it makes but sense. But like the way, it. but it could be easily misunderstood to the way that you interpreted yeah. it. Yeah, no, he's right. You're right. And so, what therefore. The, day the Music Hides by Todd Whitehead. I like that one. The day the music hides. Or something with a block. What can we do with a block? A block? Yeah. Oh, the because they're block. blocking they're blocking stuff. YouTube throws wow, a block. That's the, that's the most work I've ever world put Cuppy. in a title. Red card. Very world. Red card for YouTube. I like oh. I like the, I like the World Cuppy thing. Oh red card for YouTube. I that's like it. I love that. What's a red card? <laughs> no, I'm serious. I don't get the reference. Oh, red card. Oh, right, card. I, <laughs> I was about to say that we were all like shocked. <laughs> I was totally like, okay. What? Cricket. <laughs> I was just like, you, the no, one you, guy you with a viable soccer team, football team. You right. know, I I actually hey, have not team? been following it at all. I know, Molly. Our team. Our team won yesterday. So. Oh. Doesn't so make you're actually excited for for soccer? What's oh what's God, happening with the U.S.? Well, I mean, a if it's a sport, I'm into it. Okay. Um, but yeah, no, the to US be fair, really... two World Cups ago, I was over at Molly's house watching the World Cup. Yeah. So she's not a newbie to the World Cup. It's true. I always watch. So the you're World not Cup a World Cup hipster. You're actually no. a, a real. Okay. Thanks, Tom. I appreciate that. I'm not a total bandwagoner, but it is true that I get into world like international level football all over again right before the world cup every year it's not like i sit there and watch english premier league games um on the when you know in between in the interim but sometimes i do and for a long time i had a brazilian camera guy and so then we were all really into football <laughs> the last year when i was in barcelona we went to a match which was amazing messi scored a goal i dig it and now i'm a soccer mom now my son plays soccer but yeah, um, soccer in the United States has been growing in popularity every mm -hmm. every four years. There's more coverage. There's more interest. I was saying to somebody, we were I was in the airport and like everybody was crowded around watching the Brazil game on Friday. Uh, well, no, it wasn't the Brazil game. Sorry, because Brazil was Thursday. Um, but whatever the match was on, that was on Friday, I got off the plane and everyone in the Oakland airport is like gathered around watching these games. And I was telling somebody, I was like, man, if you go to me in 1996 and say, okay, in 2014, 
Uh, marijuana will be legal in several states of the United States. Gay marriage will be legal in several places of the United States. And the United States will have national broadcasts of World Cup football on the weekends. I would have been like, stop writing a science fiction novel. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm having a deja vu, did you like discuss this uh, with, on East Meets West or something? You said the or, exact same thing, right? Yeah, maybe I said it okay. on Daily Tech News Show before, too. I don't okay. know. Okay, all right. I was Guys, freaking out. I was thinking I had like time-traveling powers or something. Maybe I did say it on East Meets West. But not about the World Cup. I think that yeah. that's a new addition to it. There's so okay, so now fan. Americans like like gay European football as well. <laughs> we don't call it that though usually. On the no, we have Kia commercials with hot. But ladies. you know, it's it's not as 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 violent and destroying and manly and hurrah as the real football. You know, like the the one where you're elegant. I would go with. So, you mean Australian rules? <laughs> Elegant, the the elegant game, right? Yeah, we love, beautiful, we like it's the, the beautiful, beautiful game. game. Yeah. The beautiful game, yeah. Rugby, on the other hand, is the game they play in heaven, and is much more violent than. Anything. Why? Because they all died playing it on Earth. Yeah, I was gonna say <laughs> most <laughs> violent sport in the world. Because I played rugby, and it was not a heavenly experience. I think it oh was just. Gosh. I've always my theory has always been that the rugby people were pissed that the beautiful game caught on, and they're like, "Well, then ours is the game they play in heaven." Yeah. It's even better. I've seen rugby. Ugh. No. I am. There's a fire near my house. Like, like a, a like a like a hill. Like fire? a fourth alarm requested fire. Oh Whoa. no! Come on. Which I'm feeling a little nervous about. It's not super near my house, but it's like just down the hill. Uh, is it uh, is it a brush fire or a house fire? Grass fire. Grass fire. Ew, yeah. That's... But heavy brush in canyon. If it's in the canyon, it's not far from my house. Yeah. Can you smell um, The trick is this if you can smell it. Can you smell it? I know. I've totally been sitting here like... Yeah. I can't smell it. But it's, you know, it's extremely dry here, and all of us are a little squirrely because of the Oakland fires. For sure, but... yeah. So maybe you should keep there. packing. So I'm gonna keep like, packing. Yeah. More things. Yeah. yeah. I actually do have to get back to that because I'm yeah. I'm down to the toiletries and the electronics though. So I've done an. And don't forget, job. always have the car facing out. Car always uh, has to face out in the driveway if you're gonna make a quick a quick leap away from something like that. If I start Sorry, to smell the fire, any Joseph and fire coverage of 2006. I know. And look at you. Yeah, you're just like okay. So here's what I know from way Pack too much up all your valuables. Turn the car around and keep your eye on, you know, keep your nose out the window. Well, I'm just worried because of the how I'm going to be leaving and like right. leaving yeah. my house all alone if there's going to be a huge Oakland fire. But I, you know what? I don't believe there is. I think the Oakland fire crews are all over it. <sighs> it's going to be fine. Good luck, Molly. Yeah, thanks. I know. I'll keep you posted. I don't, but like I said, I don't smell it yet or anything. It's just like yeah, it's definitely my neighborhood. That's is cool. it windy? Is it windy today? Mm-hmm. Mm. No, there's nothing good about it. We're in the middle of a mega yeah. drought. It's totally windy and it's warm. So fingers well, crossed. I just okay, started the internet. All right, have fun. Positive thoughts. Oakland Fire Live <laughs> for details. Don't oh, forget boy. to Instagram it. Uh. <laughs> anyway, on that happy note, everything is going to be fine. Yes. Yes. And it was it's lovely, fine. lovely, wonderful hanging out with you guys. Yes. Likewise. Thank you, Molly. Okay. Have a nice vacation. Bye. Bye, Molly. Bye. Have a great vacation. Aviento. Aviento. Au revoir. Cerrado. Oh, wait. Oh, boy. All right. I um, get like the forest fire heebie jeebies. Okay. Almost out of the uh, post, by the way. Okay. Patrick, thank you so much for coming back for a second day. Yeah, thanks, Patrick. Day. Thank you so awesome. much for inviting me. It was a lot of fun. I, I, I really hope I didn't make the show too silly with all the hats not at no. all no it needed it needed a little uh comic relief with that youtube story for sure okay. yeah really yeah we were, we were getting really angry at one point well it's very easy it's one of those things like to be fair that's very easy to get riled up about yeah. but i do my i do come down on the side of this as a heavy-handed business operations tactic or negotiation mm -hmm because we've seen them in plenty of other companies. And it's one of those things where I also think the Financial Times went to the obvious conclusion of what the YouTube people were talking about. We're like, yeah, block. 
But whether that really means what we think it means is really open to interpretation. And I just think it was like, all right, 5%, we're coming for you publicly. Yeah, you've got so, one rights agency holding out. That says a lot yeah. to me about what's going on here, which is this rights agency, what's a better deal? Maybe they deserve a better deal. There's, you know, that that's a separate discussion. Um, and, yeah. and so, yeah, I think this is heavy-handed negotiations. Yeah. Financial Times isn't known for overblowing its headlines or yeah. its writing, though. So I'm curious whether it was just somebody who really didn't understand the implications of using the term block or if that's right. actually what he said in a different context that just didn't make it quotable. Um, yeah. And whether or yeah. not they want a better deal, the fact that they're saying we're changing things, you take it or leave it, if the changes are as substantial as they seem to be, also don't vote very well. Yeah. I also think the unintended consequences are, of this are powerful. Like, it, it might have been one thing when he said it, and it might have been one thing, but you put the word YouTube and block out there, it's a whole other thing. Oh, yeah. No, pe people are running with it as if YouTube said, we're going to start blocking you if you don't pay us to, to host your stuff. You know, and that's, it's, it's not even about paying, it's about getting paid, but still, that's, mm. it doesn't matter once it's in the public, in the internet consciousness in a certain way. Yeah. yeah. All right, yeah. I'm going to go confirm to my wife that her hat was indeed uh, on the It's a beautiful hat. Please tell her <laughs> it's a lovely wedding hat. Thank well, as you. soon as I stop the broadcast, good. you can actually forward in the video right to the, uh, <laughs> to the point. I think you might I be able might to do, do that. that. Yeah. yeah. All right, uh, we're going to stop the video. Thanks, everybody, for watching. And Thank we'll see you, you chat tomorrow. room.